Thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, I will probably make a somewhat different presentation than you had before because uh, I won't show any glossy pictures or anything like that, it's only words. Because what the transportation sustainable mobility is all about is getting together R&D within the Swedish society for transportation. It has been very diversified with a lot of institutions not having an agenda that is connected to another institution. Everybody's doing their own bit, but not really talking to each other. So as the resources are becoming more scarce, we thought that it would be a good idea to sort of get everybody together and to work on a common agenda. And doing that is not an easy task. So it took us about one and a half to two years to get everybody to talk about the same things and have the same view on what needed to be done. To get a sort of neutral platform to work from, uh, the Royal Swedish Academy of Engineering Sciences <coughs> was chosen, not being an agency, not being a company, not being a, a research institution. It's sort of a more neutral space, and I'm a fellow of that society, and that's why I was chosen to, to head this uh, um, job. So the picture was that everybody was going around getting resources for R&D, in their own way. That goes even for the Swedish agencies. They would go down to the U European Union and with their own agenda, not connected even to sometimes the Swedish politics, the Swedish government, but their own agenda, what they were interested in, what they wanted to pursue. And of course, this is, wasn't a good idea. You would have people coming from the different sectors of their agencies. You would have companies like Scania and Volvo going down. And people who are in, in public transport going down, and every, all they were Swedes, but they didn't have a common agenda of what was to be made in Sweden on transportation. So that is what we have worked on and tried to get together. We set the goal right away. And what we wanted was to create a hub. I call it a hub because it's where people sort of turn and go out and in, because that will what it will actually be in the end to have a cooperation with the different stakeholders in transportation. And we also wanted to point out larger development projects for mutual interest, to get everybody really to work together. Volvo had asked the public transport sector to work with them on different bus systems to enhance the, the public transport, and they didn't have a speaking partner. Buses were bought up about from the company's public transport on price and not as a system. So this had to be changed. And as you probably know, Volvo has in Curitiba worked a system for some time now, which is a system of public transport that Volvo is actually promoted and implemented in Curitiba. So they wanted more of that. And so we, we started this out, work out. And uh, first of all, we really didn't know who were the stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders in this transportation? It's something that you expect to work every day, that you use every day, but who are really the stakeholders? Who, who is this is concerning? Of course me, as a citizen, if I want to change my way of transport. Companies transporting goods in and out of Sweden. Uh, the course public transportation, the, the large uh, industries that we do have in Sweden, in Volvo and Scania, they're also stakeholders. So that was one aim to put who are the stakeholders, because who should be in this hub, and what are the stakeholders in R&D with the different universities, schools that we have, what are they doing? Do they have to be a part of this as well? But they should be a part of it. We had to establish a common ground, and how do we expect transportations to work in 2030? We know that the government has demands, that means that we should be independent of fossil fuels, not entirely free, but independent of fossil fuels 2030, in the year 2030. So what, that, what does that mean in reality? And we have to establish that common ground. Do we expect the economy to grow or not? From all the different stakeholders. Do we share the same expectations of the next 20 years in, in development and involvement of society? 
We had to, of course, identify problems and possibilities in this, and we tried to, then to get a common goal for the year 2030. And stakeholders were society, customers in different kinds, me as a consumer of a public transport, as well as large companies uh, transporting a lot of wood out of Sweden to other countries in Europe. We are the same kind of customers. Mm -hmm. We had a transport business providing that kind of transportation. All the different companies, post office, the post system, out to large transport companies. And we also had the infrastructure, of course. We grouped everybody on these four stakeholders' uh, headlines. And in all, we were about 120, 130 people that went through these common goals, to try to reach those common goals, to set the agenda for the next 20 years. And uh, it was quite fascinating, and it was on a, we, uh, we succeeded in getting in high level of people. So it was the directors of the agencies that were there. It was the directors of the company's research department that, that were there, and even some of the, the CEOs of those companies that were in these projects. Because it, so we got decision uh, right away. And I think that is vital, because if you want to make something happen, you have to have people in a project that also have the possibility to make that decision. If you are to go home, back, and go through the system with all different departments and so on, it, you will get uh, delays and you won't have the speed in the project that we had. So uh, it was important. So 120 people all around society to go through to see that we got the, uh, the, um, the agenda right. And this was also, you know, it's harbors, it's air traffic, rails, everybody is in here. So it got, that's why we also became 120 people. We created the first report about where we wanted to be in 2030. This was then common for everybody working in this project. This is actually where we want to be in 2030. Even if you were a vehicle lorry company like Volvo or Scania, or you were one of the environmental agencies, this is where we want to be. This is the common goal. If you get a lot of people together like that, will it sort of be... Uh, a sharp goal? Will it have, uh, you know, or is it washed out? Because if you want to have common sense, is, it, is there any point in having that for so many? Well, I would say that we actually succeeded. Uh, we've got a common goal that is, in a sense, has so many, much content that it will work for the next 20 years. So we got that goal and we were then ready, really, to start working. And we were going through what Swedish economy need, because we didn't believe that we could do this without the economy growing a little. Uh, these days when you talk about economy growing, it's an issue which everybody has aspects of, but over the long term we said that the economy has to be growing a bit to create the resources that we need to transform. Because if the economy is growing, you can always decide what you want to do with that. If you want to lower taxes, spend it more on social welfare, or if you want to spend it in transforming the society you know, to a more sustainable society. But if you are taking out resources from somebody else and putting them into a transformation into a sustainable society, we thought that might be a bit hard for the politicians to, to actually achieve that. And as we see these days, when, when all the economies are struggling, it's quite hard to get a common agenda to take from one to give to the other. So it's, uh, we said that we need to have uh, uh, some uh, growth in the economy. We tried to trigger the large development projects of European interest, and that goes especially to large transportation systems. We said that the road system is probably too cheap to use. We have to have more, it must cost more to transport on roads. And this was something that was common for everybody. No matter if you were a private company or you were an agency, environmental agency, everybody agreed that it has to cost more to transport today. That is the only thing that we can use as a steering model so that we could use the, the system that we have efficiently 
and make it cost the most when it's the most people around. And this has to go through all through Europe. So if you want to transport something which is very common for Sweden that we get the goods in from Rotterdam and it has to come all the way up here to Stockholm and we got all our green greeneries from uh, Holland in the winter uh, in the Netherlands it has to cost if they want to go on the most dense periods and we have to use the system more efficiently because we don't have the resources to build new systems we have to use the ones we have more efficiently the resources we have or can do think we have in the future has to go into other systems, has to go into more public transport and so on. Can't go into building new freeways, highways, and into car loads. And uh, we, we pointed out some of these large projects, like the one I mentioned, that would actually put us forward, going forward to the goals that we, we had set, and especially uh, when it comes to public transport. Subjects, it has to be addressed. Uh, not only the large progress, but there are subjects that has to be addressed, and what's mentioned by the speaker before me. Uh, political leadership is very, very important here. Uh, we, we might say today that we have poli politicians that react to a development today, but they have to be much tougher in leading the development, to putting out the agenda. Uh, it was clear, it was clear right from the beginning that uh, we can't have a system when it comes to transportation where, where the politicians react, they actually have to lead the development. As was mentioned before about planning, this was one of the central things, and we have in Sweden been very good with planning, but we aren't anymore. And it's not that we have the urban sprawl coming out, because we are actually building our cities inwards today. The, the, the city you're in now, Stockholm, builds basically all its new housing in the inner part to use the old infrastructure that they already have in place. So we're not really creating more urban <coughs> sprawl, but we're not having a... a we are not in line with transportation systems and the urbanization going on. They are not in line. And we used to have a very good planning all over Sweden for, for the entire country. That agency doesn't exist anymore. So it's actually the, the new uh, road, combined road and rail authority who is planning Sweden. Because where they put their rails and where they put their roads, you will have development. And it's not in, in line at all with where you have urbanization. So. so we do have large problems in the greater city areas where there's not enough in resources going in to expand the public transport <coughs> in the way that you really need and want. This has worked so far fairly well, as everybody, as I said, was building inwards. Uh, and you will see if you go around Stockholm that a lot of people are using the bike today and it has expanded immensely during the last five, six years. And people are also walking because it's much faster than taking the bus. So, I mean, it's, uh, not enough money has gone in here and it's not in line with, with the planning uh, tradition that we have in Sweden, actually. So this is something also the politicians have to, to look at to see how we can put this in line with, with transportation. Cooperation, uh, we've had heard about uh, build, operate and transport different projects and this has to be more of because not to finance the projects. I mean, probably the government of Sweden who still has a triple A rating can get the money cheaper than the Volvo can. So it's not a question of finance but it's a question of working together for mutual interest in the infrastructure projects. We think that you will get much better projects out of that, much better development. We need regulations and taxes or fees to be able to create the development that we want. We want to have that, and this is fairly new to Sweden. We have that in Stockholm, <coughs> and Gothenburg is getting it, that you pay a toll to get into the city uh, during certain hours. And you will probably have a system where you can pay, where you have to pay using the road system during certain hours as well for, for commercial transportation. 
So we have to have a system of fees in place and of course maybe some taxes. Regulations, definitely so, when it comes to distribution within the, the larger city areas. Uh, are you allowed, if we are living more and more dense, when is distribution going to take place? Where is the room for distribution? Today in Stockholm, all the milk comes into the city before 7 o'clock in the morning, because after 7 o'clock, there is no room for milk deliveries. We have dense areas like the old town where we have had regulations for years. We will need to have regulations in a larger area for transportation. And the fact is there won't be room for anybody. Uh, the, the fees that we have now uh, started as a discussion over uh, uh, pollution, uh, cars, NOx. Today it's a system where there is not enough room for everybody. And we are having trams coming in as well and there won't be room for cars parking in the street and so on. So you have to regulate this. And this regulation is also a, a job for the politicians. They have to, to back up regulations. And uh, I will say that the, in, as if we get in the trams in Stockholm and they're going to take away all cars parked on the roads, streets, uh, that is a huge political effort to get away all those cars. So, uh, but you have to. You have to. When we had addressed all these problems, we put down an agenda for, for getting through here. And uh, we did. We came through. We got the common goal. And we got the uh, Swedish agency, Vinova, for innovation systems to sponsor this. So they have put forward the money that is needed to get everybody together. We got another investigation going on about the, the different institutions and the R&D that's going on in Sweden to get them to get their profile so and, and coordinate that. So when Sweden goes to the EU, we, we do talk the same language, we do have the same goals, and we think that will be an, an advantage when you're seeking funds for different things, that you are in a context that has government sanction and everybody's working in the same direction. And we identified some large projects, uh, as the one I mentioned, and we got to some extent finance on those <coughs> projects. Uh, the last part, of course, being the most uh, troublesome one, getting money for large projects to try, and, uh, full scale projects. Uh, but we got a good way to start, I think, with uh, the companies like Volvo and Scania taking the lead on that. And it's not for new vehicles, but it's for integration, transportation system, uh, and commuting systems and public transport being the, the essential thing here. Thank you very much.